Hey, what's up everybody? This is Chris Francis with Church Film School, and I've got a question for you. Did you know that there is an extremely high likelihood that your editing environment is actually working against you? And I know some of you might be having a home office, you might even edit in your kitchen, or you might be even saying, you know what, my office is actually really awesome. I've got my Ikea lamps, and I've got my shiplap accent wall, and I've got my uh, little cactus, and it's pretty cool, but I bet even if you've been intentional with how you've designed your office, I bet it's actually negatively affecting your videos, how you look at them, how you color correct them, and how other people are actually watching your videos. God created our eyes so amazing that they will adjust to almost any situation. Our cameras, our computers, they're dealing with actual measurable uh, color temperatures. So 5600, 6500, 3200, 4400, shades of magenta, shades of green, all of this is going to affect how you view your videos and how you color grade your videos. Because if you are in an environment that is not color accurate, you're going to be making creative decisions based on how the lighting and the walls and everything that's in your office, everything that's in around your computer, how that's affecting how you're seeing your image. And odds are, no matter what you've done, you're probably not actually seeing your true image on screen. So let me show you what I'm talking about in my office here. All right, so I just moved into a new office a few months ago, and this is the first time in years that I've had my own dedicated space where I can basically do whatever I want. And because I'm a huge dork, I did an unnecessary deep dive into how to make this office the perfect environment for color grading. So I want this deep dive that I went on to benefit you guys. So I'm gonna share with you the five things you can do to transform your workspace into a color accurate environment for post-production. And just as a disclaimer, I hope I really hope that one day companies will send me a bunch of free stuff and I can do reviews, maybe even keep it, but unfortunately I'm not there yet. So everything I'm gonna talk about in this video are things that I spent my own money on, I paid full price for, so I'm not getting a kickback for any of this stuff. I'm just sharing with you the stuff that I personally use. All right, so almost every computer monitor, at least anyone that you would wanna be editing on or color grading on, is natively set to 6500 degrees Kelvin color temperature, which this means that it should serve as the tuning fork for the rest of your lighting choices in your office. You know, like if you've ever bought paint in a hardware store and then got home and put it on your walls and it looked completely different, well, that's because the color temperature in your room wasn't the same as it was at the hardware store. And I know this because I may or may not have painted our kitchen literally six different shades of tan before I finally got it right and my wife was happy about it. So anyways, this same exact thing can happen with your computer monitor because the lighting around your monitor will affect how your eyes interpret what you're seeing on the screen. So the best thing you can do is just go with the flow of your computer monitor's color temperature and try to get the rest of your room to that same 6500 Kelvin color temp. Now, if you work in a space where you only have control over like turning your lights off or on, you can't change the lights, um, the easiest thing would be to turn off the lights and then bring in your own lamp, your own floor lamp, and then uh, you can light your own space when you're editing or grading or you know designing graphics for that matter. And for my office here, I've got a lamp from Ikea. And ideally, I would prefer to have just like a really dim, warm, golden bulb in there, just making the place feel cozy and vibey, but that would be terrible for color accuracy. So I took the Ikea bulbs out and replace them with 6500 Kelvin LED bulbs from Waveform Lighting. And let me tell you, they are amazing. And they're kind of expensive at $18 a pop. And the main reason they're so expensive isn't just because they're 6500 degrees Kelvin LED bulbs, which that can be kind of hard to come by, but it's mainly because they have a color rendering index known as CRI of 95. Now I won't go super deep into CRI, but basically the higher the number, the more pure and accurate the light is. And the lower the number, the more variation you're gonna get in the light, which is why the cheap fluorescent lights, like what I was just in, have that greenish tint to them when they're supposed to be white. As a good rule of thumb, when you're using lights for filmmaking or for your office, you wanna be using lights that are above 90 CRI. So you've got at least like a base level of accuracy in your colors. And also I'll link below in the description to the exact bulbs that I'm using.
Now the next thing you can do, and your eyeballs will thank you big time for this next one, is to install some bias lighting. Now what is bias lighting you might ask? Bias lighting is a light that you put behind your monitor to create ambient lighting around the screen without shining directly into your eyeballs. Now installing bias lighting will do three things that will help you. One, it'll help reduce eye strain and fatigue from looking at your monitor all day. Two, it's gonna help you perceive the contrast of your monitor more correctly. And three, it'll help you perceive the colors on your monitor more accurately. For my computer here, which is an iMac uh, with a 5K display, I'm using the MediaLite 6500 Kelvin bias lighting system, which I'll also link to below in the description. We're sticking with 6500 Kelvin here, so everything in this room, including the computer monitor and all the lights are the exact same color temperature. Now this particular light is a USB powered LED light strip that you can just stick to the back of your computer monitor. And as you can see here, I'm using gaff tape here because I wanted to be able to take it off easily. And then you have a little controller module where you can adjust the brightness or turn it off and on. And the whole thing runs off of USB power from your monitor, which is nice because it'll turn itself off whenever you power your computer down. Now these little LED lights have a CRI of over 90 and they have excellent reviews. And if you go to their website, about 20 seconds after you visit the site, you should get a pop-up offer on your screen where you can enter your email address and you'll get a 20% off coupon. Now, if you work in the middle of a room and you're not up against a wall like I am here, uh, you can help your eyeballs with, uh, with the strain and kind of create an ambient uh, bias lighting in the room by just using your lamps uh, all across the room to make a soft 6500 Kelvin environment with the light bulbs that I mentioned previously. And then that way you're at least not just editing in the complete dark. Now the third and final type of lighting that we can improve is your office's built-in lighting. Now I know that not everybody is gonna have permission or you might not even wanna change the lighting in your house or your office or wherever you're editing. But if you're a dork like me, you've got some options. Now remember the gross green matrix lighting in the other room from the overhead fluorescence? Well, that's what I used to have right up here and this is actually what my office used to look like when I first moved in and started editing. Pretty terrible, right? So I took the liberty of tracking down the highest quality 6500K LED tubes that you can find on the market, which ended up leading me right back to waveform lighting. And so I swapped out my regular fluorescent lights with 6500 Kelvin 95 CRI LED replacement bulbs. And luckily for me, my little office here only has two bulbs because it would be crazy expensive if you had a really big office. And as I learned, ordering tubes online can be a little dicey because they're pretty fragile. And I learned this the hard way when my first order showed up with a box that was like super dented and then I could just hear the broken glass at the bottom as I was shaking it. So there was just a pile of shattered tubes down there. But luckily waveform lighting was great enough to ship me new bulbs, new tubes immediately that came in reinforced boxes. Not sure why they didn't do that the first time. Um, but since I had those broken bulbs, I could kind of use it as a science project and dissect them to see what exactly is going on there. And as you can see, they're basically long LED strips, just like the bias lighting inside of a glass tube that is then wrapped with diffusion. These lights are great and I'm so glad that I did this extra step for my office because I use this space here to prep my cameras before shoots and it's nice to have just bright overhead lighting for that type of stuff. And it's just kind of a bonus that it matches perfectly the rest of the lighting of my office. So if I really do want to edit with bright rooms, I can do that and the colors are going to look really nice. Now moving beyond lighting, the fourth thing you can do to drastically improve the color accuracy of your workspace is to paint the walls. And not just any color, you want to paint the, at least the wall that is directly behind your computer gray, but not just any gray, it has to be the exact right gray. Now there are crazy expensive gray paints that you can buy from places like b &H Photo if you want to get super nerdy and money isn't a factor for you. Or you can take this exact recipe down to Home Depot and have them make you almost the exact same thing at a fraction of the cost. And this is exactly what we did for our offices here and I'm really pleased with the results. So without diving too deep into the science of the gray colors, 
This particular shade of gray is perfectly neutral and it won't affect the lighting of uh, the colors of the lights that are hitting your wall. It won't affect how you perceive the colors on your monitor. It's basically just a completely blank slate. And if you don't want the rest of your office to be gray, you can paint it some other neutral color as long as you're not blasting it with tons of lights that are going to be reflecting colors back onto your computer. But for me, I figured I went this far, so I might as well go all the way and paint my entire office this exact gray color. And the fifth and final thing you can do, and I literally just did this for the first time about 30 minutes ago, is to calibrate your monitor. And there's a couple of popular tools that you can use to calibrate your monitor. But after reading a ton of reviews and talking to some colorists and some editors that I really respect, and also realizing that if you actually want to do it perfect, exactly perfect, you have to spend a ton of money on crazy tools. So I landed on the iDisplay Pro from X-Rite, which is right here. Dee, 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 dee. And this cost about 260 bucks, so it was definitely more money than I wanted to spend. But there's a couple other options as well. You could use like the Spider 5 Pro. Um, but I went with the iDisplay Pro just because the reviews seem to be a little bit better and I know that you can actually calibrate TV screens as well, which is important for me because sometimes I use just regular TVs as client monitors on shoots and it always kills me how crappy the image looks on the TV compared to the camera or my production monitor. So I haven't tried that yet. I haven't tried calibrating a TV yet, but that's one of the main reasons why I sprung for the i1 display instead of their cheaper color monkey calibrator which is from what i understand basically the same hardware but it's less versatile and it's slower and the software is maybe not so good in this video i'm not going to go step by step through how i calibrate my monitor because that would take forever so i'll just put a link below this video to a really great tutorial that'll walk you through the entire process step by step and i also want to make an important note here the first time I did my screen calibration, I used the software from X-Rite that came free with the iDisplay Pro, and to be honest, I was not happy with the results that I got. The screens on my colors looked pretty whack, so following the tutorial that I'm going to link below here on how to calibrate your monitor, I used what they recommended, which was DisplayCal, which is a free software that is a lot better and is a lot more accurate and is scientifically more advanced. And after I ran the calibration using DisplayCal, my monitor looked much better and the software even has a mode where it can retest your monitor to verify that it's accurate and give you all the statistics and data if you want to dive into that. So here's a before and after of my screen calibration so you can see the difference. By default, the iMac tends to be too contrasty and it leans pretty hard over into the blues and the magentas. And after using the iDisplay Pro and the DisplayCal software, you can see what the monitor looks like once it's calibrated properly. You can see the shadows more accurately, it's not as contrasty, and it's also gotten rid of that magenta blue cast that seems to come default on iMac monitors. Now, if you want to become a colorist and get even crazier with your office setup, you can buy much better monitors than like just what comes with the iMac. Like, Flanders scientific monitors. But for the rest of us, just dialing in our iMac will get us a really solid foundation. All right, well, I am exhausted and out of breath. I do not know how these young YouTube whippersnappers do this every day. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. And if you have not subscribed, click on the button and let's do this. And also, you can follow Church Film School on Instagram for more content and behind-the-scenes chicanery. So until next time, keep it 6,500.